Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. What's up, Luke? Simons? Like diamonds. Yeah, oh, here. yeah, uh, you did it. You did it. Ready to talk trout fishing. Yes, this is going to be the beginner's guide to catching endless speckled trout in the summer. Here's why we're doing this. As you know, we have a really large private insider club, and we're getting new members every hour, more like every five minutes, it seems like. Last week, I think we had our biggest week ever. It was 900 new people joined in a week. That's mind-boggling. So growing like crazy. As you can imagine, let's just say 900 people approximately. There's a wide range of people in there. We have some brand new anglers who have never caught an inshore fish. We have, uh, I'd say the majority are just kind of weekend warriors, people that that want to become better but are already catching some fish. And then you have some experienced uh, people, even some full-time guides on the other very far end of the spectrum that just, you know, that like sharing. There's some that just really enjoy sharing and love having a bigger network of uh, our 40 something thousand uh, members. And like the, the discounts on a uh, tackle doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt either. And on the newer sites, this is, everyone could learn something here, but on the, the newer anglers, one of the biggest questions, and I think their struggle is they're seeing everyone else out there catching these inshore slams and they've you know seen us on video or they've watched other people on Instagram or whatever on YouTube just having these fantastic days of catching big bull redfish and big snook and flounder and trout. And I feel like they're trying to do too much too fast. And what we end up hearing is, oh, I went out and I, I tried to catch a slam and I got nothing. And or like, I don't even know where to start. And so this is for you, right, Luke? Th this is one of the easiest things to do. You can do it in so many different places. And it's just to catch trout. And we've had days before where we are trying to catch big red fish or snook, and it's just slow. And many times we'll go back and just catch trout. It's almost like a confidence builder because we can catch them on demand, if you will, and then go out and it's almost like you've kind of broken the ice, if you will. And it almost makes it easier. Sometimes it takes that pressure off to find the redfish or snook or whatever it is. So this episode is for you. We're going to keep it super simple. Probably won't have to go that long on it because it's not that complicated. But we do, if you're listening, we do have smart fishing spots pulled up on the video version of this. You can go see it on the blog or on YouTube. And we're going to show some actual spots like where we would go to just almost guarantee that there will be some speckled trout there. So, Luke, with that intro, I will hand it over to you, Meow. Yeah, right, right, Meow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, and, and so this is also uh, for those who are more experienced. There's going to be days when when just the, the fish aren't biting very well. If you're targeting a redfish trout or a redfish snook, flounder, a big trout, and this is just uh, this is what I use either when I take some of my new fishing, they just have guaranteed results. Or if I'm out on one of those slow days where just nothing is working, this is the fallback to just to make sure to get some tight lines. And that is to target the outside edges of, of grass flats. Um, this is, you know, this is for areas that have seagrass um, for, for those in, in more marshy situations where there isn't grass, but a lot of oysters, it's going to be the outside, the outside oysters around Creek mouse. If you can find those types of zones, during the summer, these fish, they're naturally going to gravitate toward deeper water and deeper water with current flow. And so if you have the deeper water with current flow and structure on the bottom, that's the combination you're looking for. So in this case, we're in an area with a bunch of seagrass. So these, this is all shallow flats. During the middle of the day, this just gets super hot. Those fish aren't going to be comfortable and they're naturally going to gravitate towards the outer edges. So the easiest way to get guaranteed results is simply to target the outside edges of the flats. Yes, this even works good on incoming, uh, you know, when the, when the water's high, um, but it's especially good when the water's low, right? If you're out there and it's an abnormally low tide or at least toward the lower spectrum of the tide, that's when all these fish, even from being hot and from there literally not being much water, they will all be here. And, uh, and we've had uh, many podcast videos over the years along this stretch and nothing special about this stretch is just easy access for us um, we've had multiple videos where we just catch an absolute ton of trout like with one hole over here we pulled out like it was like 30 trout it was 10 casts in a row that i personally had where i caught a, where i caught a trout um, you can get days where it's just absolutely amazing but most importantly it is extremely rare if, if you actually spend an hour 
or two targeting these outside flats. Again, again, nothing special about these, but outside grass flats like these, if you spend an hour or two doing that, it is extremely rare that you don't catch something. And for this type of fishing, I actually recommend lures over live bait because you're going to be dealing with a lot of catfish and a lot of pinfish and just small stuff that's the little bait stealers. And there's going to be a lot of weeds, right? You're going to have frustration with weeds. For lures, it just keep it simple. Three to four inch paddle tail on either a three sixteenths or quarter ounce jig head. That's all you need. Whether you're trolling, that works great. Take somebody new out. You know, I take people out who aren't the best casters and I'll just cast for them whether it's a, a kid or, or just somebody who's brand new and then let them hold the rod and then just troll up and down these edges. And it's shocking how effective that is, or you can yeah. drift, right? You don't have to have a, a, a trolling motor, troll motor helps, but you don't have to have anything fancy. This is just the let's get out and catch some fish type of game plan. As I said before, it's shocking how effective it is. And we've it's really tr- simple as that. We've tried a lot of things and because I know a lot of people say, all right, just tell me what to buy. Don't just say paddle tail. The Slam Shady 2.0, yep. if you're just going to get one on a quarter ounce jig head, is it. That's why I keep a hundred pack on me. The kids can do it. Like you said, Luke, you control for them. Yes, other things will work. But I know even full-time guys that keep some of those Slam Shady 2.0s, that's a three and a half inch paddle tail and a little quarter ounce, quarter ounce jig head. And for trout in particular, in this scenario, I don't think anything else can uh, can beat it. The uh, the other thing I, I want you to to give more clarity on, Luke, is I'm putting myself in the shoes of a new person who's just listening, and they hear you say deeper water. Some people from up in New Jersey that man, you're talking about seventy feet. Um, so I- explain what you mean, like actual depth wise in general, from the flat to what deeper water means in this scenario. Well, deeper water just means deeper than than the the other like the you basically want to find the deepest structure you can find. Um, obviously, this you know, once you get to the ten foot mark, it doesn't matter quite as much. But but in this case, and in, in, in a majority of the cases, it's going to be that the flat is going to represent an an area that on in general will be about uh, either one to three and a half feet of water, maybe, maybe one to three feet. So yeah. on average, two feet of water is the is the general flat in a lot of our base systems. And when I say the 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 outside edges of the flats and the deeper water, as you're basically looking for this deeper edge, and that's basically basically most most of these channels are going to be in the ten to fifteen uh, foot depth range, and then as you get closer, it obviously slopes up, and that this deeper grass is where you want to target, and that generally is going to be in the the three to six foot depth range. Sometimes it goes deeper, and that's awesome, right? Stick to the deepest stuff. But what I really like to look for is this pattern. You can see this pattern on the satellite map. This is from Smart Fishing Spots. We have some really clear maps on here. But I like to see this type of pattern where there's there's some some areas where the grass is coming out and there's little sand sand pits as well where it goes and even some some potholes. Really like to see this sort of uh, kind of abnormal. You don't want I, I don't like a straight line quite as much. So I love seeing we call it a camo bottom yep. or just irregular bottom. There's just a lot of ambush points for these predators to hold on in this type of bottom structure versus I'll show you one that's uh that's more of a straight a straight edge so this is more of a straight edge yes there's still plenty of fish here I've, I've personally caught a bunch of fish here I just don't do quite as well on these straight edge uh shorelines as I do say these over here that have the 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 kind of ins and outs like the bigger um just more unique bottom I should say um but again the key is just really cover ground and and, and, and again no more than an hour if you're doing this, you should be catching fish. And yeah. if not, then just go just go you know a couple miles away, find another similar spot, and uh, and when you get to the right spot, you're gonna know quickly because those fish are gonna be there. And and the key is depth control. Do not use popping corks. I recommend against popping corks for this type of fishing, especially if you're in areas with clear water. You're gonna need to get your your lure close to the bottom, and and that's just more and more true as the sun is is higher up in the in the sky right that sun's gonna be high the, the sun's gonna be up that the the top layer of water is gonna be pretty hot and those fish don't want to mess with hot water there's not as much oxygen in the water they're gonna be holding down on the bottom in that nice cool water and in most cases they're not going to want to go more than a foot or two to eat it to eat to eat something so if you're in six feet of water and you have a popping fork that's keeping your lure three feet off the bottom or more the odds of a, of a fish which is holding on the bottom coming up and grabbing it is going to steadily decline 
So I recommend bouncing bottom. You want to be able to feel the grass and um, and just know that your lure is right down there in the strike zone. And again, uh, shockingly effective. Um, one, one thing though, is that it's definitely better to retrieve with the current flow, but it's not a requirement. So the stronger the current, the, the more important it is to retrieve your lure with the current flow. Um, but as long as you can hold bottom, as long as you can get your lure <clears throat> and bounce along the bottom, you technically can, can go against the norm and retrieve into the current as well. So if you're weight fishing, or if you're in a boat and you uh, you don't have the ability to to really you know if you don't have a trolling motor and you can't you know can't really control the boat as as well as you'd like, um, as long as this lure, as long as you're you're bouncing this lure on the bottom and getting the strike zone, if a fish is there, it's likely going to eat it. Yep. And in the ninety ten zone that we talk about a lot still applies. <clears throat> There are going to be trout probably in a lot of these areas, but you will find certain sections that are much better. And then mm -hmm. you'll find even little certain potholes, right? Luke, like that one you talked about where you just caught fish after fish. It was right in the same pothole. That was the 90 tens. I mean, 90% of all the fish were in that one little area and they were stacked in there where to the point, it didn't matter if you had a tail, no tail, barely any tail, uh, barely a nub. It, it was absolutely nuts. As long as to your point, as long as you got it down deep enough and made some action, those things were attacking it. Yeah. And so, and so again, lure selection is very important. And, and again, the, the best all purpose that we found so far, whether the trout are big or small is that slam shady 2.0. It's a three and a half inch paddle tail. Uh, this tail has great action. It doesn't require any fancy retrieve. Fish will hit it on a straight retrieve, even, even on the drop, right? This tail has good action on the drop. Uh, you can twitch it on the bottom. Um, there's a ton of different ways to do it. If uh, a pinfish or puffer fish bites the tail off, or if you see a bunch of small bait fish, I purposely take the tail off to mimic the smaller prey, and it, it works great. It works great with or without the tail. Um, rigging is crucial. So we have a lot of videos on rigging. The, my favorite jig head for this paddle tail is the trout eye jig head. It's made from Z-Man. has this big eye on there. The hook size is just perfect, and uh, and it's pretty easy to rig as well. So trout eye jig head, I, I would say a quarter ounce is the good is the all-purpose one. So quarter ounce trout eye jig head doesn't really matter what color eye it is, um, but get that rig it properly, meaning that it's nice and straight and it doesn't helicopter in the water, and you're going to be catching fish. Yep, and that's all at fishstrong.com. Fishstrong.com is our tackle store, and insider members get twenty percent off all that stuff. I get a hunter pack. I I, I literally. I won't go fishing without a hunter pack of that slam shaded 2.0. And usually I'm handing some out on the boat to other people and giving some away. Uh, but it's just, it's man, it's, it's such a no brainer. And that, that thing works anywhere. Not, not just here in a, in Florida. Let's talk about smart fishing spots too. So for those of you that maybe aren't as good as reading maps and, and can't pinpoint an area like, like Luke does in seconds, smart fishing spots has a couple things that can help you. One it's got a seagrass feature that's in most states and that will identify all of the seagrass. You also have oyster beds for the states that have that. So it identifies where the oyster beds are. As Luke said, if you're in areas like in, you know, the Georgia, or the Carolinas, you can just go around the Creek mouse that have some oyster beds instead of looking for a, a, a grass flat per se, that it has a channel nearby. And then you got the Marine charts as well. So you can use that right there. Yep. Yeah, there you go to show the depths that are around there. So like that area you talked about, oh, cool. Yeah, it does get to 10, what even 13 feet in that little channel. It's like, oh, okay, cool. And then it goes up really, really shallow. Uh, this is such a great way to solidify some of the spots you have or just help you identify them in general. Yeah, and if you want to, you know, start with trout and then maybe transition to redfish and snook, the quickest way to do that, again, and we'll just talk about Tampa Bay and or I should say areas with seagrass like Tampa Bay, Charlotte Harbor, and really most of, of the Florida coast and a lot of Texas is to find some oysters near shorelines. That is going to be the high probability spot for redfish and snook. They really like getting close to the shoreline, especially areas with seagrass and oysters. And so I just use that oyster layer when I'm out traveling to check it out new spots. Even when I'm going to the spots I've fished before, it's shocking how many oyster beds are out there that I've never known about simply because I just haven't had time to, to check out every inch of the shoreline this this oyster bed layer is in my opinion the most valuable part at least me personally the most valuable part where i can find just just from the oysters alone significantly increases the odds of finding some reds and snook 
And then the satellite views, I mean, the high res in certain areas, it is crazy what that reveals. Um, uh, I don't know how this area looks in particular, Luke, but yeah, so here's, the... here's Google, right? If I, if I zoom in on that same flat from just normal Google maps, can't hardly see anything. And then we have Bing and, and the high res satellite. In this case, the, the Bing one's awesome. So I just stick with the Bing one for this area. But okay. again, so it's a cool platform where you don't have to go from one website to the other to check out different maps, literally just click a couple buttons and you can have multiple views uh, without having to, to uh, pan or do anything special. Yep. And then for you current members who already are using this and, um, and, and give us great feedback, just so you know, cause we've heard this feedback from a lot of, of you members, we are working on, on the smart fishing spots, software and platform, bringing in smart fishing tides into it. The tide stations are there. You can get it, but it's a couple clicks away. And so we're essentially eliminating those clicks. So now let's just say you're, you think this spot's good. You're going to be able to like automatically see the tide stations and it's going to tell you exactly what the tide is going to be during certain times of the day. It's going to show you the strike score. So what we also do is show a score every single day and then even have hourly feeding projections based on all the different variables that are coming in and that's so cool i mean it's just so helpful so we're going to have everything there on one screen right at your fingertips that's uh that should be here before labor day is the is the goal it takes a little bit of building out but i uh, know that we are working on that based on your feedback so thank you guys yeah so right now it's it's all available just the smart spots is um or the smart fishing ties is on some platform but it'll be combined just to be that much more efficient yep and then the community spots, Luke, if you want to go to that top left, this is something that I've I've been showing some members as I've been going to these um, chapter meetings, showing them some of this, and they're like, I didn't even know about it. And so now at the top left, you can hit community spots and see all the reports for that area. And there's even a filter at the top right. So top left of smart fishing spots, you get to see all the, I don't know, 60, 70,000 fishing reports that are on there. And then there's a filter where you can do it by month. Um, so you can actually see all the things that have happened that month, which is really, really helpful if you're looking at, you know, trends for the the same uh, the same month. So much you could do with that, uh, that filter. And uh, every time I've shown it to a member, like, I didn't even know that was there. This is so cool. Uh, so just one more way we're helping you guys find exactly what you need. Yeah, and, and this includes, you know, past insider reports, spot dissections. This is, again, incredibly valuable, just year-over-year -year analysis on, on not only what's biting, but where they're biting. And then when you click on these click on these reports, you can actually see, you know, what, the, uh, what was caught, what was used for lures. Again, incredibly valuable information, and it's super easy to access, as you saw. And it just gets smarter and smarter every week which is even better. So that's really it. That's the beginner's guide just to keep it super simple is to target essentially the edge is how I explain it to people of where a flat meets a channel. And Luke, you mentioned it, current flow. It helps to have some moving water. In that instance there, you're pretty close in the big scheme of things, um, you know, to a little pass. Uh, so there's, there's some good water flow, but Heck, I, I've seen it work even on days where it's almost a slack tie. Like if you find that, it, like you'll get something to hit. Obviously, you do want flow. What What are your thoughts on that? Do you ever time it around uh, a certain tide or uh, uh, anything like that for for the trout? No, I mean tide tide doesn't matter what's going in or out. It, it you know matters some, but just not not much. It's more about just needs to be moving. And and even during slack period. You know, it's not going to be moving very much, but the the channels, the main channels are always going to have the strongest water flow. And, and during the summer, that's where fish will naturally gravitate. So the, um, the decision point on fishing, you know, way up on the flats or, or going closer to the channels, regardless of we're at the top of the tide where there's not much movement at the bottom or somewhere in between, the, the edge of the channels are, are going to have the highest odds of success because that's going to have... The, you know, it's going to have a lot of trout. Trout will hold there throughout the tidal, tidal range. Yes, a lot of them do sh uh, shift up into the shallows at the higher tides, mm -hmm. but a lot of them do just stay right right there. It's, it's easy for them. It's comfortable. As long as they have good structure, they're not going to sit on just sand and just have uh, be easy pickings for dolphin. But as long as there's structure on the bottom in the form of seagrass, rocks, oysters, if there's, if there's structure and current flow, so they have safety, 
and they have current that's going to be moving food towards them, they're going to be there. And, uh, and so that's why if you're, if you're struggling and you're worried about just getting skunked, I would say, don't even worry about the shallows, just stay on the, on the outside edges, find the deepest structure you can find that has current flow and, and, and just bounce a jig along the bottom and you're going to catch fish. It is, it is very difficult to get skunked if that's your game plan and you stick to it for at least an hour. Very difficult. And in most, in many cases, you'll catch an absolute ton of fish. You'll catch trout. And when you're on the outside edges, you increase the odds of catching the roamers as well, like Spanish mackerel, uh, jacks, ladyfish, even cobia tarpon. You know, the, the odds, especially in the summertime, there's going to be a lot of big fish cruising those flats too. And you can even be reeling in a trout and, uh, you know, six foot tarpon will come, uh, come steal from you. So it, it just really, it's just a lot of fun. And just most importantly, it's easy. It's something that you can take your friends out who are, who are brand new to fishing. You can take your kids out fishing and know that they're going to have some action, not just get super bored and, and want to go back to playing video games. So just highly recommend just giving it a try. Keep it simple. Don't get, don't overcomplicate things. Paddle tail, jig head, get it on the bottom, bounce it on the bottom and uh and you'll be having some fun action yep and you can do this in a kayak you can do it waiting you can find plenty of flats that you can actually wait out to that have a channel out there and you don't need a power pole you don't even need a trolling motor right we've done this many times we did it in freedom boat club we did a whole session on that where we just drifted with the uh, current or wind or both uh, you can also troll. I mean, that's one of the easiest ways to find where the fish are and you know, have fun with the kids. And you still get a little bit of a breeze if it's super hot in the summer. The uh, just just go to our site, saltstrong.com, if you're already there. If you want to watch that or YouTube, and just put trolling for trout, salt strong, and it'll pull up. We have a couple videos where we've showed exactly how we did it, the speed. We won't go into all that there. It's so simple, and uh, it's a really good way to find that 90 10 zone because all of a sudden you'll be going and. Both lines will go down at the same time normally and like, all right, cool. We found the zone. Now let's, you know, assuming you don't have a power pole troll motor, let's drift through that area and just keep making cast and keep doing it again and again. Pretty cool. Yep. Trolling for trout, baby. Cool. Well, yep. hope you guys found uh, that helpful. And if uh, you're not a member yet, what the heck are you waiting on? Someone to grab you by the hand and show you exactly where to fish every day, tie, time of day, et cetera, and give you 20 to 30% off everything uh, you need tackle wise. Because if that sounds good to you, that's what we do in the Insider Club. Guaranteed to help you save time and money. Go to saltstraw.com. Join us in the 43,000, just at 43,000 active members uh, in the club. Uh, it's saltstraw.com. Anything else you can think of, Luke? No, that covers it. Yeah, just go, just go, just use that strategy. Uh, give it some time and, and you'll be surprised how effective it is. Yep. Hope that helps, guys. Let us know in the comments down below if you've done it or uh, what other questions you have. We out. Peace. See ya.